All right, now we have the rear servo or the low reverse servo piston. This is what sort of activates the low reverse band clamping action. So it all sort of comes out. There's a, a snap ring, then there's this little spring retainer, spring itself, and then the piston. The piston actually has one more layer of disassembly, but my snap ring pliers won't fit in the tiny little baby little snap ring holes. So I can't really disassemble this any further. Um, there's not really a whole lot to it. This, this piston comes out in the spring. Um, so once you get this all apart, the next thing you have to do is replace the seal. Now I have a couple different rebuild kits on hand, and every one of them has a green seal. For this now just a quick look I'm not convinced this seal is the same size um, so that's like I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that but anyway first thing we do is we take off this seal and I'm gonna be a little more careful than normal because there's an outside chance I'm gonna have to reuse this seal so I'm gonna get my screwdriver and I'm gonna get in behind it and attempt to get it off here. If you use a pick, you're guaranteed you're going to tear the seal. The screwdriver, there's an outside chance you can do it without tearing the seal. Because if you nick the thing or slice it or something, you're done. The seal cannot be reused. So if you didn't actually care, then Harbor Freight. Okay, your Harbor Freight uh, pick will be a perfect tool. So, so um, I'm going to put my finger in ATF to go around the inner lip of this before I put it on. Just seems like a good thing to do. Why not make it extra hard and slippery? I didn't mention it when I took it apart, but the flare goes down like this. So the flare is out towards this side of the piston. So it means when I put it on, I'm going to put it on like this. The flare this direction. Okay. I guess I got my camera at a weird angle because when I lift things up to sort of a more eye level than I guess I'm off camera, so I'm trying to be kind of cognizant of that. Okay, yeah, that looks right. So, the way this is going to get reassembled spring retainer, lock ring, snap ring, and put that back in the bore. Okay. Next, we have the kick-down piston. Um, and of course, this fits in this way. Um, so this all comes apart. So it goes down in the bore like this. Right, and there's a snap ring holds it. And uh, this, so the pressure actually gets applied here. Pretty sure. Pushes this up through. So anyway, upside down, we'll take it apart. There's this top piece, which has uh, a sealing ring, a Teflon sealing ring at the bottom, and another one at the top. Then there's this spring. Then there's this piston. Now this piston has, doesn't really come apart any further, but it's got this little um, red O-ring, which is sort of different than, it's more like a typical O-ring. It's, you know, rounded on the edges as opposed to like these other O-rings which are really more of like a ceiling ring. And then here there is another ceiling ring. Now the ceiling rings on these are the angled kind. So I can find the seam here. They're the um, the kind where the, the ceiling ring meets at an, at an angle like this. Both of these are like that. Let's see if I can Get that. There's no way it's going to show up. I can separate them a little bit. You just barely see the slit. It's like this angled ceiling. 
this one is a butt end seal, which there's no way I'm going to be able to tell you. So anyway, these sealing rings typically don't get replaced unless they look really rough uh, or don't seem to be sealing well. I've got them. I've got the new ones in the kit. Oh, well, this one needs to be replaced because I literally just bent it, wiping it down. So I guess we're going to... Yeah. <laughs> that one doesn't seal anymore. Okay, so now i got to find the right ring and replace that. Okay. Okay, so get your ceiling ring, and they go either direction, it doesn't really matter, but I think the easiest way is to put it over the top, and just slightly move it around, and work it into the groove, just kind of pinch it a little bit, and now you can see that thing is smooth all the way around. Now my kit doesn't actually seem to have a replacement one for here, um, but this one looks like it's in good shape, so we're going to leave it, remember I was going to leave the other one too. Um, and then the next piece is the red o-ring, um, which I'm also going to try and be careful just because now I'm a little nervous that I might not have the right replacement. Okay. Now my kit came with the two, so you just got to find the right one. Not that one. When I first started doing these, I was really annoyed that they didn't label um, these things, but it turns out like it's pretty obvious how it all goes. I will, good measure. A little ATF over this. And then it's just a simple matter of putting an O-ring on, which you need, shouldn't need a video to show you what that looks like. Again, a little ATF on my finger, on the inside of this board here. Just a little free lube, everything. All right. So then this goes in, just like that. Poof. Then you put the spring on, and you put this right here. Boom. Now you've got the kickdown servo done. Okay, the last piston is the accumulator, which has got a ceiling ring here and a ceiling ring here. Now, inexplicably, my overhaul kit does not have the right ceiling rings for the accumulator, but these look pretty good, so I'm content to leave them. Now, there's a couple springs. They just sort of set in, and they'll fall out again. The long skinny spring goes in this hole, and then the big fat spring goes over this. I know some people leave the spring off, some people leave this spring off, sometimes the factory service man doesn't even mention this. Um, so the accumulator is sort of like the, it softens the shifts, but lots of guys will do crazy things like run without one or whatever, so this is like the full how it, how it goes.